All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Uh, Mick Thomas here. Cheers for listening again. Cheers for tuning in, for liking, subscribing. As always, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the support uh, from everybody. It's it's uh, It's going good, man. It's going good. The old train keeps on rolling. Wasn't that a, a Tina Turner song? Big rig, big rig keeps on rolling. That's what it was. I was thinking of Johnny Cash. The train keeps rolling on. Um, how are you doing? You're not going to answer me, of course. Uh, but I hope you are doing fine during the struggles. Right? I hope uh, I hope you're you're using your time wisely. You know, and if you if you if you you're lucky enough to still have a job, I hope you're grateful for it. I I, I hope. If your family members are not sick, that you're grateful that your family members are not sick. You know? Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird week. You know, I turned out three podcasts. I did one on Sunday. Um, and then I got the other one out with Anthony DiNomenico and Dan Barry. You guys seem to like that one a lot. Uh, I posted that late, so these kind of podcasts seem like they're coming back to back. But I'm trying, right? I'm trying. They're coming up late because I got banned from Facebook for 24 hours because I posted a joke. And uh, basically, what it was was, uh, is a kid. It's not a joke. It was a video my brother sent, and it was a kid, maybe f- four or five years old, and he's wearing like like pull ups. A Spanish kid. Uh, the reason why not because he's speaking Spanish. And he uh, he's massaging this woman's arse like a woman's in a in a bikini lying on the be- on the, on by the pool, and he's massaging her arse. And then when the camera pulls away, the little kid has a little kid boner. And uh, I posted it, and Facebook took it down. Um, they banned me for twenty four hours, which I guess that's their warning, right? That's their warning before they taser me. And I know friends who've been in and out of. Facebook jail and all that stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I got I got fucked out of it for uh, twenty four hours. So the podcast came up a bit later. So that's why it kind of seemed like the podcast. This one might seem like it's on top of the other one, but it's fine. It's it's fine. You know, I I it is my goal that in this time, um, I have started school, and I'll talk about that another day. Uh, the steps, I should say. I'm, I'm pretty much there now. Um, you know, I've, I've learned Spanish and um, and I'm learning chess. And I'm trying to play five songs a night on guitar. Trying to, you know, just... And I'm trying to turn out three podcasts a week because, again, I've been through all this before. It's just the, 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 the job of staying creative, right? That's what we're trying to do. But I had... Um, it's been a shitty week for me this week. Uh, it's been kind of trying, you know. Um, whatever. I, I don't know what what happened, but it's it's you know my my a buddy of mine passed away this week, and uh, you know it was it just it was it was fucking hard, man. My my buddy Vic Henley. Um. I almost feel like like a fraud calling in my friend, right? Because um, because of who who he was, right? And and when you look at his list of friends, like friends, not acquaintances, right? He's friends. I could sit there and it's like a who's who in the comedy world. And Vic was my friend, right? We would text, we would make fun of each other through text message and whatnot, and uh, you know and. When I say, you know, he was a friend, it was you kind of feel, does that make sense? Like, you feel like a fraud when you look at who he can pick up the phone and call. Like, I'm not going to sit here and name drop. Um, but any comic, in, in especially in the New York community, would have called him, you know. Like, you would just see, I mean, the whole, the whole comedy world was kind of shook by it. Because, you know, he died from an, 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 uh, an embolism. Am I saying that right? Am I saying am I saying that correctly? Is it an embolism? Am I, I I don't know. Sorry, I'm I'm a fucking moron. Um, you know, he he had it was like Monday night he got it right, and 
or, or Sunday, I think he wasn't feeling good. This is what I've heard from from his family, and uh, he wasn't feeling he wasn't feeling good, and uh, you know he went he went down, and uh, you know they took him to took him to the hospital and an embolism. I think it was, yeah, yeah, I'm saying it right. You know, and then at uh, 57 years of age, man, and and he was he was gone. You know, and uh, it was it wasn't. I don't know, man. It was really kind of like he was just, and everyone says this, you know, like he was the. And, and I've been doing this this week. I've been texting my friends and stuff, and and trying to get in conversations with them, because it's like I almost feel like a hack, like the cliche when you know when someone dies and you kind of you miss your chance to talk to him and stuff, but you miss your chance to, you know. I'm rambling, but I would all I would text a bunch of my friends this week just to check in on them, and a lot of guys went online and you know on live streams and they would see me guys that I you know that I I look up to in the comedy world, and they would reach out and mention my name. It was kind of cool, you know. It's like I'm not part of. I don't feel sometimes part of that of that world of like the massive, the big guys, you know, the big fish in the comedy world. And but you know I've worked with them all and. You know, but Vic was one of those guys that, like, I, I started working the con- like I didn't always work the city. I started when I started comedy here on Long Island. I just did the, the the clubs out here, and then what happened was I would go on the road. Now, going on the road is a lot different than working in New York City because New York City you have to have a certain gear. It's not like oh, well, my shit out in Long Island or my shit in Pennsylvania or my shit in fucking you know, upstate New York or, or going to Oklahoma, like that stuff, I'm not going to get on a stage in New York City and, and not that the material won't work, but there's an attitude to New York City that there's a gear as a comedian, and comics know what I'm talking about, but there's a different gear of, get, I mean, it's not like I'm picking up a guitar, right, and start, oh, let me just play this song here. It's the same song, it's going to work, you know, I can play a fucking, I don't know, Rocket Man by Elton John, I can go to any town, any club, any bar and play it and people go, well, that's Rocket Man. But comedy is different than how you connect with that audience. It's not immediately coming out. Let me just start telling jokes. Do you have to make that connection? So I would go on the road, and I I didn't go into New York City right away because you kind of get one shot at New York City when you go in there. You know, if you if you audition for a club and they don't like you, it's like yeah, I'll see you back in five years. I don't have five years to wait to come back to audition again. But so I spent years on the road of just div- learning how to work the road and that kind of stuff, and you know, learn about comedy ethics and politics, and just learn how to to become a really strong comedian on the road. And then, then I kind of went to the city, and, w- and one of the first, if not the first, club that I got past that. I mean, I performed at other clubs at night here and there, did a bit of television show at Gotham and stuff like that, and and and. Uh, but there was one club that and it was the comic strip, and I still love the comic strip to this day. I still, you know, I hope we pull through this because I want to go and see my family there because that's what they are to me at the comic strip. But Vic Henley was one of the main house MCs there. The house MC means that, like, he, you turned up at a certain club, you could pretty much guess which of the few MCs. I'm going to say that the few MCs because not everybody can do that job, right? When you go on the roll, the MC is looked down upon. Right when you go out anywhere, it's like, do you want to MC? It's like, oh fuck, I got an MC, and it's almost considered like you start off as an MC when you go on the road, and once you start off as an MC, then you work your way up to middle. From the the middle act, you work your way up to headliner, and it's not like that in the city. In the city, it's treated like it's a tough fucking job, and only the best could do it. And I could sit here and I could name the strongest comics I know. Man, are are we're all MCs. You know, you go to the comic strip, you had James Matter and Tom Van Horn, Mike Britt, and of course, Vic Henley, uh, just fucking, and there's one or two other guys in there too, I'm sorry if I'm not naming you guys, um, but Vic was just so welcoming to me, because I was nervous, not for my audition, but I didn't know anybody, and I walked in, and, and there was Vic, you know, a guy from Alabama, and it was like, he was every bit of Alabama as you thought he was, and... Uh, Man, fuck me, was he kind. Was he happy, but he was honest too. You know when people say, when people say about somebody like, and he didn't have a bad word to say about anybody. Vic did. Vic had 
a lot of shit to say about certain people, but he was honest, man. You know what I mean? He didn't shit talk people. He called people out on their bullshit. There was no talking behind your back. He called people out and I saw him do it. I would watch him do it and go, holy fuck, I didn't think people did that. Because all I'd known was on the road comics, right? The, and Vic was a road warrior too, man, for years and years, right? Years and years. Worked with the best of him. You look at posters from the old days and he's on that, he's on a posters with like fucking him, Next week, Louis C.K., next week, Bill Burr, fucking Vic Henley is up there, you know? Him and Ron White, best friends. Vic Henley played in a fucking sold-out radio Radio City Hall, man. But, but Vic would call people on their bullshit, which is so fucking rare. And I remember there's a certain comic at the comic strip, and uh, he would pull a dick move every now and then. I'm not going to mention his name, but some guys know who I'm talking about. And you would go in waiting to do your spot. Now, what I mean by your spot is you had a slot time of when you went up. Right? And this is about the comics. Most clubs, most, most clubs have it. The road comics don't. The road comics just have, here's the show starts this time, then it's over at that time. You're going to MC, you're going to middle, you're going to headline. The, the city spot, you have usually five good comics, maybe a guest spot on there. And then what would happen is you would get, um, you would get a call Right, your call time, and let's say it was 8.20, 8.40, 9.00, whatever it was, right? So you would get there, and you're ready to go on. And especially me, I would drive all the way in from Long Island to the comic strip, which is about an hour and a half, two hours with traffic, an hour and ten without traffic. But we'd say we'll average it an hour and a half by the time you hit the lights and stuff. You got in there, and then you're right in time, you know, for your spot time. And then it was always this certain comic, and he would come up to you and he'd go, I, if I did the impression, you would know who he was. <laughs> so he would just come up and he'd go, hey, listen, I got another spot down. Is there any chance we could swap spots so I can go up now and you can go? And I'd be like, fuck, man, it's late at night as it is. But like, I, I would like, I was new to comedy, right? I'm not new to comedy. I was new to the city. So I was like, I was trying to help out as many guys as I can. And plus, like, there's guys there who, who have swapped spots with me to help me out. You know, really good guys there. So I would always, you know, let's do the favor for somebody because you, you might want it back yourself. So I would swap the spot and, and you know, and Vic would be like, you want to swap? I said, okay, buddy, you swap and then he go, that, that's fine by me. So I would, <laughs> I don't know if that's a terrible Vic. I'm sorry if it is for those of you who knew him. And uh, so Vic would go in, right, bring bring the other guy up now instead of me. Right, because the other guy has to get out of there in a hurry, so he would go up, do the twenty minutes. Some, he would do twenty five. Sometimes he would blow the fucking light, and then as soon as he would leave, he'd be like, "I'm going, man, come up, man, make down." Right, and and I would go up, and you know, and 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 Vic fucking knew how to MC, man. I would go up, I would do my set, and I would come off stage, and that guy is sitting at the bar, like he never left. Like you asked me to swap, asshole, so you could get out of here because you had a place to go, and I come back out, and you're still sitting at the bar drinking a beer. Why do we fucking swap spots? Right? And I remember fucking Vic just laying into him. Just laying into him. Like, no, man, that's bullshit. You don't, you don't do that. Like, you don't, you don't fucking do that. That was Mick's spot and you took it. And a lot of guys wouldn't have called him on that. And I remember another night there, it was fucking, um, I won't mention names again, but someone from Saturday Night Live came in, one of the cast members. There was a lot of those guys and girls coming in and out, so... I was just about to go up and in walked SNL star, right? And uh, they go, yeah, yeah, that, that person's going up next. And I remember, because if that was the case, I lost my spot. Because this person could go up with a notepad. And because they're a celebrity, because they're famous, it's good for the club. And look, I get the club. I'm not bitching about the club. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bitching about the club. If I owned a comedy club and a celebrity walked in, I would definitely put them up. It's just good. It's good business. It's 100% good business. Um, but the comic strip always looks after his comics, but it, it's, I, I a hundred percent get why you put up, uh, an SNL star. So I just remember fucking Vic coming up to me like quickly, I'm, I'm going to get you up now. Watch this. Like, and I was like, nah, man, it's all right. This person's here now. I'll, I'll fucking just, I'll just take my money and I'll go home. Cause I knew I was going to get bumped and Vic would give whoever's on the stage the light early to get that guy off the stage early. So I could get up. And he would bring me right up and I would just fucking go do, instead of doing a 20 minute set, I would do like a, a, a 12 to 15 minute set, which it was fine because I'm, you know, if I'm working on material or whatever, 
But that that's who Vic was, man. He didn't, you know, he was like, you know, that's bullshit. You're not taking, no, you're not losing fucking stage time for these guys. You know, when I said these guys, the, the SNL guys, you know. And he was fucking just so, so, such a fan of the comics. Such a fan of comedy, man. And I would come into that club and anyone who knows me there at the comic strip, if I'm there on a Friday and a Saturday night and they've got two shows, right? If they've got two shows, then what happens is I do my set on the Friday night. I leave, especially in the summertime. If it's the summertime, I'll go across the street. I'll get cookies and I'll go down to the Met. The Met, one of the most famous museums ever. I'll sit on the steps. There's a waterfall. There's like there's fountains outside. They're going uh, once the fountains, I sit there. I'll eat my cookies, drink some milk. I listen to my set. Or sometimes there's a jazz, there's a there's a saxophone player there, and he's playing. And I'll just fucking chill out, man. Then I'll walk back, and I'll and I'll do my second set, and I'll leave. Or or in the winter time, there's a pool hall around the corner. I might go in the pool hall, but a comic who wants to go, whoever's around, let's go to let's go play a pool in between shows. But not if Vic was there, man. If Vic was there. You would, uh, you would stick around. You would stick around. You're like, fucking, let me just sit here and laugh my ass off. I mean, you sometimes you couldn't get a word in edgeways, but that's fine. Because, man, when Vic would fucking tell those stories about comedy, that because I'm a fan of comedy. I'm not just a comedian. I'm a fan of comedy. I fucking love stand-up comedy. I love the history. And Vic was history. Vic knew every fucking comic. And he didn't just know of them. He knew them. And you would just sit there... And I would listen, this young pup of a comic, and I would just listen and get this education on all these fucking old guys and stories, what they did and what you got away with. And, you know, I've been, I've always gravitated to people like that who have great history, you know, like Vic Henley, Carl LeBov, another one, um, y- you know, and, and it, it's, and I was lucky to call. You know, I'm looking to call Carl my friend. I was looking to call Vic my friend. But these guys with these stories, man, you would just sit there going, fuck. You would be inspired. You got off stage and you talked to Vic. You wanted to get back on stage. And then we would talk about music. This guy, holy shit. I thought I knew a lot. Like, I'd be that guy, you know, I, like a song would come on, like from the Stones or the Doors or whatever. It's like, or Janis Joplin or any anything from that era, right? Leonard Skinner or whatever it was. And I go, you know, they wrote that song... When fucking he fell off a motorcycle while whatever the fuck. And um, Vic like, that's right, but did you ever see? And then all of a sudden now you get fucking schooled. Like you thought you knew shit about music. You thought you knew it, but you knew fuck all, right? And I got, you knew nothing next to, to, to Vic, you know? And uh, I got, I have a video. I started to make this mini documentary that I never finished um, you know, and and because he had this accent, like he, it's just that typical, you know, I used, I wrote a joke about, it, I never did it on stage because kind of Bill Burr kind of did a version of it and I just don't want to be, it's too close to it. And I always thought like, if I was down in Alabama, right, and I, and I hurt myself, right, and I had to go to a hospital and someone with an Alabama accent wanted to operate on me, do you know what I mean? He'd be like, well, we're going to just go operate on your leg right there. I'm like, the fuck you are. You're not fucking coming near me with that accent. I don't give a shit how good you are as a doctor. You're not doing it. I never did it on stage because Bill Burr's version was... I mean, go check it out. Jesus Christ, I'm not going to book him. But Bill Bill Burr's joke was, what if Albert Einstein was from Alabama? A equals MC squared. What the fuck? You're laughing at, man. I'm serious. <laughs> but Vic had that Alabama accent that people thought, like, this guy's fucking... Like, there's no way he's not, like, a bit... A bit slow because you got that accent, got that draw, got that draw. Um, but holy shit, man, was he fucking. In, but my point was, I, I did this mini documentary and I got to talk to my friend to get the footage back, actually, and I'll try post it. But where I would interview people, I was just going for my citizenship test. I and mean, the point was, a lot of people I know, a lot of Americans, they didn't, they don't know the answers to become a citizen, right? Which is American history. And I got Vic, and the the key was to grab audience members as they were leaving the comedy club. And I was, I think it was the comic strip, and they were leaving the comedy club. And I would stop them and say, "Hey, do you want to answer some questions?" And like, and, and basically, people were failing and failing and failing. And I asked Vic. Vic goes, "I may do it." So I, 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 I I'll do it. So I uh, we put Vic in front of the camera. Man, he fucking aced. I think I must have asked 50, 50 out of the hundred questions, and he got all fifty right. 
The old, no, I tell a lie. John Trusen from Long Island, uh, from from Governors. He he was him and Vic Henley were the only two guys to get every fucking question right. You know, it was just ah man, it was just, it fucking he was just kindness. You know, he was just he was just warm, and he you always you always fucking laughed with Vic Henley, right? Every every serious XM show, every comedy channel's got him, got him playing right now. You know he's on Opie and Anthony constantly. Then he was on Opie and Jimmy, and now he's on Opie's show a lot. And it was just like everyone wanted him because he had this ex, such experience. If you ever got him, and you know what's fucked up, man? We 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 spoke on text two weeks ago. And I swear to God, I'm not just saying it to be a dick, but he was going to do this show. He was going to do this, and I was looking forward to just, ah, uh, just sitting there, letting him go, bring up a topic, and just sit back and let him just fucking educate people on, which is stories, just entertain people with stories, you know. And and he was going to do the show. Uh, he's going to do the podcast, and you know, he never, you know, I just couldn't, uh, just just never happened. But fuck me, man, was he, um, you know, and I was going to do a show with him this summer up in Nantucket. He puts together the show every year. And he asked me to do it last year, I think it was. And I think I said yes too late because he kind of needed somebody to fill the spot. And I was kind of hemming and hawing and about can I, will I, won't I. And he kind of said, hey, man, I feel this bad. And I was like, which is fucking fine. I understand that. He filled the spot. And uh, he said, we're going to do it this year. And I put it down and in the calendar. And it's like, I fucking, I'm kind of bummed I won't get to do that. Because I never was really on the road with Vic, you know. I never got a chance to be, like, you look at his Facebook page. If you look at it, Vic Henley, uh, just find him and just scroll through the people that posted on his page, man. Just... Like there's no, like there's, I don't want to, I don't want to name drop. I don't want to sit there and name drop. But the whoever's who, who's who in comedy, is on that page, man. Just pictures of them back in the day. You know, just it fucking sucks. And you know, it, it's, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's gonna be shitty because, you know, with my dad passing a few. You know, what fucking the last few months, man. I've lost in in in. In order, like I have all this shit going on. I've lost my comedy. I've lost comedy. Lost, you know, my father passed away. My dog passed away. Not so, like a few months ago too. And fucking Vic and and when I found out Monday, I just, I fucking, I just left my house and I went for a drive and it was like, what the fuck, man? It's just a really like, it hit me hard, man. That you know, and it's like then I'm talking to comics like Tom Van Horn and 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 Joe Matarese. You know, we're talking. And, uh, you know, it was, it's devastating. It's devastating, man. But, you know, like I said, it's it's kind of a shitty, shitty time right now. And it's it's just a lot. It's just a lot to deal with. So, you know, if you, it, fuck it, man. Just, just what I've been doing every week is I'm picking two people from my friends list. And what I'm doing is and I just send them a text or, or an Instagram message. And I go, hey, man, how you feeling? Or, hey, mate, how you feeling? Right? That's it. You getting by? Everything okay? I check in. Now it might turn into a long conversation. Or it might not. It might just be, yeah, man, I'm fine. How are you doing, right? And it's, But I'm just checking in on my friends. And, and you know, like I said, this, this whole thing can either make you a better person or it can make you, make you a fucking worse person. And I, for me, I'm hoping it's going to bring out the best of me because I'm reaching out to all my friends and, you know, just to make sure they're okay. And I'm glad... That I got a chance, like that Vic just happened to, I just happened to reach out to him two weeks ago, and you know, talking about doing the podcast and and everything like that. So it's, uh, but you know, don't be shy about fucking texting people, even if it's a text, even if it's a text. Just reach out to somebody, man. Just do, just pick two people in your, uh, go to your phone and pick two people a week, two people a day maybe, and go, hey man, just checking in on you. And I, that's what I've been doing. That's that's what I've been doing. Just. You know, it fucking sucks. And, you know, I know it's, it's all depressing and I'm sorry if it's all doom and gloom, but it's like we're not here for long, man. I mean, Vic, 57 years of age, he went away and it's like it for no fucking reason. He was a healthy guy too. 
He was a healthy guy too. Just fucking laughing all the time, right? He loved his loved his fucking bourbon, loved his fucking whiskey. Not not as in a, I didn't mean that to come across as an alcoholic, but he loved his glass or two of whiskey. Right? He was just other than that, he was a healthy he was a healthy guy, man. He was a healthy guy. But just uh, get out there, man. Look, I don't mean to bring everybody down, but look, I just wanna I just wanna say, you know, I just kinda want you let you people know of how, you know, how important Vic was to me, to comics, to comedy, um, just to life. He was just a good soul and uh you know, just don't take shit for granted. That's all I'll say. You know, don't take shit for granted. And like I said at the start, and, you know, if you have a job, be thankful you're still working, you know. And if your family members are not sick, be thankful they're not sick and you still have them. You still have them in your life. But um, anyway, I just want to i will leave the show on that one. And next week we'll be back to comedy of trying to fucking make you laugh. We'll have some comics on here. And um, we'll get some uh we'll get some jokes in there and uh hopefully it'll be a little bit more uplifting. But like I said, I just wanted to kinda of let you know guys know what Vic Henley meant to me and uh let you guys know what I'm going for. So until then guys, I'll talk to you soon. Uh best of luck. And again, like I said, when my dad passed away, it's like I don't really believe in heaven, but I hope there's one now. You know, I hope there's one for him. For him, just so he's got a place to go. Cause he deserves to go somewhere. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Didn't Jerry Springer say that? Take care of yourselves and each other. All right, guys, uh, have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Any questions, comments, concerns, send them on to me on my Instagram page, uh, Mick Thomas Comedy. Take care of yourselves. Be healthy. Be safe. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. It's the Mick Thomas Cheaper Than Therapy Show. Can't even sing. Don't even want to sing. Oh, well.